In this video, we're going to look at making meshed objects, so things like nets and chainmail. So I open up the crate object, which you'll find in the assets folder, and just put that into the center of your scene. And the first thing we're going to do is add a floor object, but not the actual floor from this menu here. You don't want to use this floor object. We're actually going to make one which is proper polygons that doesn't just kind of disappear off to the horizon. And I'm going to make this just a bit bigger. So 600 by 600 centimeters would be about fine. And I'm going to reduce the segments down to just one big flat polygon is fine for me. And we're going to use this as a collider along with the crate so that when the net drops off the side of the crate, it doesn't just disappear through the floor. This will be an invisible collider. And I'm going to make that into a polygon object and I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to go down to simulation tags and I'm going to choose cloth collider like so and leave it as it is. And I'm going to get the crate and then I'm just going to raise this up so it sits onto the, the floor. Uh, so that will be 100 centimeters in the Y. So you can just type that in. That's fine. Hit apply. And that's there in the right place. Now we're also going to apply that tag the cloth collider tag to the crate. So you don't need to add a new one, but you can if you want. I'm just going to control click and drag that down onto the crate. Now I'm going to add another polygon plane. And this is what's going to be the base of our, our mesh or net or our chain mail. So go back in to the menu and choose a plane. Now I'm going to raise this up above the crate. And I'm just going to zoom out just a touch so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm probably going to make this let's say 500 by 500 and for the segments I think I'm going to add 30 by 30 and hit the C key to make this into an editable object I'm going to go into my top view and I'm going to go into point mode and what I'm doing here is I'm just going to add just a little bit of interest to the mesh now you can have any kind of pattern or design you want on here I'm going to go for that kind of chevron look so to do that I'm going to take my rectangle selection tool and I'm going to select every other row of points. And all I'm going to do is once I've got this selection, I'm going to move the selected points just down so that they're parallel with kind of the next set of points along. And then I'll neaten up the edges so that we don't have kind of straggly pointy edges. And this will remain a square object but it will just give that mesh a bit more interest when we finally make it into netted material. Okay, so I've got those selected and I'm just going to drag them down. It's gonna be minus 20 centimeters in the Z. So just type that in there, that's fine. Now I want to grab those top points and move them back 20 centimeters or to 230 that's gonna end up like so and I'll do the same with these bottom points here let's just move in a bit so you can see maybe a bit clearer what I'm doing so I'm basically taking this row of points and making it level with the next set of points up which will be about there should be just round that back to 253 now I'm going to grab those points again the whole lot across the bottom edge there. I'm just going to hit the T key and flatten them out. I want them to be zero in the Z axis. So just hit zero and there we go. So if I back out to see this whole object, this is now all incorporated in a square. Let's just check the top edge. Hasn't done anything odd. Let's just make sure that they're all okay as well. So I'll do the same again and I'll just type in zero in Z so that they're all completely flat. Like so, okay, so now we've got this chevron looking mesh. If I go into display and turn lines on and drop that, you can see what we've got. Now at the moment, this looks like maybe some kind of woolly jumper, which isn't quite what we're after. We want these, we want each of these edges to be basically a tube. And to do that, we're going to drop this into an atom array. We're not going to do that just yet though, because rather than using the magnet tool, which we could do, and I'll just show you how that would work. If you go into the magnet, you could shape this 
by pulling it down and pulling it around and doing everything by hand but that would become quite tedious and time consuming and although you get lots of control with that you, don't, you want to do things that are going to save you time so let's just undo all of those moves because there is an easier way and we're going to use the cloth engine as you may well have guessed so I'm just going to drop the magnet tool choose my plane and I'm going to rename this to net I'll just rename that one floor so I don't make any mistakes down the line so I'm going to get my net and I'll right click it and I'm going to go to simulation tags cloth now here in the attributes manager you can see the settings for cloth I'm going to use the calculate cache uh, in cache mode but before I do that I'm just going to make a few changes now we want this to be reasonably soft and malleable but we don't want it to stretch too much so I'm going to turn the stiffness down because we don't want it to be like a board but we also only want a tiny amount of rubber otherwise it will stretch but we need a little bit just to soften up the the amount it falls flexi on I'm going to turn up just to about 30% thereabouts and this should be a good starting force now what we're going to do is there's already some wind and gravity built in a very small amount um, of things that are set up here but what we're going to do is go straight to the cache mode turn it on and click calculate cache and you'll just see that this progress bar should be reasonably quick now at first you might be thinking well nothing's happened but if you scroll through your timeline you'll see that this actually falls now so just hold down J and drag to the right in your viewport and you can see that this now falls and looks pretty good already actually just dragging left and right holding J just scrolls through it's kind of like a uh, having a shuttle built into your keyboard it's quite useful or you can just go back to the beginning and play through it which is F8 so looking at this as it animates through I can see there are a few points that just need maybe a bit of refining before we move on to the next stage and I think what's probably best for this if I just stop this again and I'm just going to go right back to the beginning I'm going to take my net object and I'm just going to subdivide it so I'm going to go into polygon mode right click and choose subdivide just one subdivision is fine and now I need to go back into the cloth tag and I just need to empty the cache and recalculate it because we've changed the underlying structure just it's a slightly denser mesh now so this is going to take just a little bit longer but it's still going to be reasonably quick by the time I've said two or three sentences it's going to be done and then we can move on like so okay now you can see this has changed the pattern very slightly uh, it's still quite an attractive pattern and it will give us a nice looking mesh but bear that in mind you might want to do if you preferred it more chevron like how it was before then you might want to add more subdivisions to your original polygon plane object um, but if you're happy with this then great uh, I personally think this looks quite nice but it's worth bearing your options in mind so that, that's all done and I can now hit J and drag to the right and there we go we've got a bit more definition to this it looks a bit looser and we get some really nice rumples if that's the right word you can see here there's lots of nice detail and you can see it's all kind of like collecting naturally and to get that kind of a look using the magnet tool would have taken quite a long time quite a lot of work so I'm just going to let that play to there and that's where everything is sitting on the floor nicely and what we can do now is take our atom array object drag the net into it and you'll see that this actually looks a bit horrible at the moment because this just looks like a big kind of mess of spheres and bars so what we need to do is go into the atom array and we need to turn down the sphere radius and I'm going to take this so it's just a little bit bigger than the cylinders like so and that kind of gives us a hint of some knots although I think actually let's just zoom out a bit I think that the cylinders can actually do with being a bit smaller than that as well so let's take that to 1.5 and I'll go to 1.8 for the sphere radius subdivisions we can probably go down to about six for this and there you have it this is a, a nice looking mesh now I'll save this scene 
So you'll have this in the assets folder with the floor and the crate and everything in there. And then when you want to mess around with it, if you just want to kind of play with the scene that I've built, all you can do is go back to the beginning of your scene. So go back to that point there, put a new object in instead of the crate so you can remove the crate. And then all you'll need to do is run empty cache and then calculate cache again with your new object in there. And you'll get the same result of the, the net falling down over the object you've put in. The only thing to remember to do is to take the cloth collider tag and put it on your new object.